This is doubles luge. It's an Olympic sport that's quite intimate. Yes! And for that, it's also become the internet's favorite sport. So I wanted to know more. Like, what's the point of adding that second person to luge? What is the physics that separates winners from losers? And why on earth did the 1976 West German teams wear these as helmets? The word luge comes from the French word sled, which makes sense because luge is basically competitive sledding. Let her rip, hang pen. Sled racing can be traced back as early as the 15th century in Norway. But luge actually first appeared in the late 1800s, founded as a recreational activity by Swiss hoteliers. Seven nations competed in the first international luge race in 1883, but it wasn't until 1964 that luge became an Olympic sport. Olympic luge has four events, men's singles, women's singles, doubles, and a team relay. In general, here's how it works. Athletes have four runs down this type of track over the course of two days. Their times are added together, and whoever has the fastest time wins. Competitors flash down the 1,000-yard shoot in less than one minute. Now, luge is an extremely fast sport, with riders reaching up to 90 miles per hour. So events are timed to the nearest thousandth of a second to determine winners. Let it drag. The beginning, and arguably most important part of a luge run, is the launch. After launching, athletes lie down as they steer on the track. The turning mechanisms require lots of little tiny movements with your body, dozens of them in fact. So you have little weight shifts with your body, little pushes with the shoulders onto the luge itself that help you turn. But they need to keep their bodies as flat as possible to avoid added time and air resistance. You know, it, it's like sticking your hand out the window of a moving car. You know, if it's up like this, you feel a lot of air hitting your palm. But if you turn it kind of an airplane mode, I mean, your air resistance goes down precipitously. So now that you have the basic physics down, imagine adding another person to the equation. Enter doubles luge. The biggest difference is obviously weight. The average weight for doubles is close to 396 pounds, with the sleigh weighing between 55 and 66 pounds alone. With this new weight comes new challenges, and weight distribution becomes key. Well, you're not only adding weight to the, the luge itself, but you're extending it over you know, a longer distance and a greater area. Those types of movements that the riders are making, they have to be in great communication. The athlete who is shorter goes in the back of the sled, while the taller stays up front, nestled between his or her partner's legs. As they steer, the top athlete stays as flat as possible. Team USA athletes explain that this positioning is because of aerodynamics, noting that this is how the airflow works best, because a slight shift could result in possible disqualification, or worse. So let's break down this crash scene. Oh, oh, no, 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 that's over. Oh, oh, boy. So the turn wasn't quite sharp enough, and that's going to mean that whatever they enter into the straightaway, they're going to come straight down into it at too sharp uh, an angle. And you can see there's a leg out already trying to get this thing arrested. They're trying to add friction here to get the turn to get back up a little bit. And now, once they've gotten onto the inner wall, they get the kick from that one, and now they're gonna be too high coming into the straightaway. And you can see them actually going airborne. It's a pretty good recovery, the way that they were able to prevent greater injury. There also needs to be a lot of trust between the athletes, especially since the bottom person can't see anything and has to rely on the top partner to avoid crashing. It's definitely a really, uh, Olympic ideal that you have this sense of cooperation between two people who literally have each other's lives in their hands. Former Team USA bottom loser Andrew Shirk explains what it's like. Being a bottom man, I can't see anything going down the track. I have to rely on Justin's movements to do anything. If there's a curve coming up, I have to rely on his head movements and body movements going down the track. Athletes describe that the partnership is kind of like a marriage explaining that basic chemistry is definitely necessary. 
Duos basically live together five months out of the year and still train together during the other seven. We spent, you know, the entire summer together. We spend the entire season together. So we're always next to each other pretty much year round. So when it's two people on one sled, you know, you're, it's a different type of bond. They know exactly what the, the track is going to be. They know when they get to a certain turn that one of them has to have a slight shift in one direction. So all this has been mapped out ahead of time in the practice of the training, and they just have to make sure they execute it flawlessly. To, it, it, it's incredibly dangerous. So why do these athletes opt in for this challenge? It all comes down to teamwork. Teamwork. Oh, brother. We can do anything when we have teamwork. In 2018, Team USA's Jason Turdyman had this to say. Luge is an individual sport, but doubles gives you that team aspect. What is your favorite part about being a duo? For me, it's definitely the teamwork, just being able to bounce ideas off each other. Yeah, it's been kind of cool because when we were singles athletes, we were always competing against each other. And then to come together and just use everything that we've learned over the past and just combine it has been a really cool experience. One writer put it simply, it literally only exists because at some point in time, one guy looked at another guy while they were about to go luging and said, hey, want to go together? Ah, uh, how precious. Aww. So who's the luge team to watch in Beijing? Germany, who's won 34 of 48 gold medals in luge overall. Now that's impressive. And remember that picture we showed you in the beginning? Well, fun fact. Back in 1976, the West German teams wore these cone head helmets, which helped the team win three medals, thanks to their aerodynamic engineering, which led to banning these types of helmets in subsequent Olympics. And with technological advancements, professors like those at Clarkson University's Department of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering are studying how to improve sled engineering and aerodynamics. So don't be surprised if a few years down the line, a new funny looking helmet or uniform is introduced. But for now, get ready for all the memes, because the internet's favorite sport will grace our TV screens once again. Out of the gate, almost straight into the first curve. What's your favorite winter Olympic sport? Is it double luge or is it something else? Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below.